All right, all right, we're live from Jonesboro, Arkansas, 304 Studios, and this is a stspod.club production. I have two people with me today, the tag team Country Rock, Carter Matthews. Look, I'm going to look at your name so I don't ever forget it this time. <laughs> uh, Carter Matthews and Chris Hayes. Welcome, guys. How the hell are you? Man, we're doing pretty good. How about you, BT? Oh, man, I'm ready. You two guys, kind of like one of my favorite tag teams on Championship Wrestling from Memphis, and we'll get to started talking about the name, the whole gimmick, and everything as we go along. Uh, I've known, I've kind of known Chris for a while, uh, or his family, and Carter, me and you, that's what shooting the shiznit's about. It's about people I don't know that I find interesting, I bring them over here, and we shoot the shit. So let's get started. I'm going to get started with you, Carter. Now, growing up, I want to start at the very beginning. Growing up, being a fan, and Chris's fandom is going to be a little bit different because he was around the business, but what do you first remember about becoming a fan of professional wrestling? Oh, man. That's a loaded question. My brother got me into it. Uh, He was a big-time fan of it whenever we were kids growing up, and I really didn't catch or really understand all the buzz about it until the late nineties. Both of my older brothers uh, were heavily involved and well, I wouldn't say involved, but loved the Monday night wars gimmick. And uh, you know, they're always big fans of stone cold and Goldberg and you know, all those main top guys in WCW and WWF at the time. And you know, that once they fell off of it, I kept with it and I've always loved wrestling. It's just something that, Truthfully, I I escaped everyday life from from being bullied as a kid to you know just being that outcast in school. Like I was the kid that loved wrestling and that embodied it every single day. Like you I was still, the I wrestling still, kid, huh? The I guys. was the wrestling kid. <laughs> like I'm still the wrestling kid when it comes to my job because e- even today, like one of my bosses has my. Has, <laughs> my name programmed in his phone and I'm about to give a little bit of information out, but it's Nick Hogan. Oh, uh, there we go. (laughs) Yeah. I think it's funny. So I'm going to reveal some, we're going to kill kayfabe for a minute. Yeah. We, we, you know, we don't, uh, we don't hide a lot of stuff on these shows. No, we really don't. So for those that don't know, my real name's Nick Scott. Uh, And I get confused as hell because Nick Scott (laughs) will message me and I'll go, who the hell is Nick Scott? And then I didn't even remember your name. So, uh, I had I was always the wrestling fan too, and my first personalized t- uh, tags was R A S S L N, and everyone thought it was Roslyn or something. They didn't know have any <laughs> idea that it was wrestling. It was uh, it was the first time that we could get personalized tags, and I had to do that. So, all right, Chris, I want to talk about you growing up as a fan. Uh, were you? And I, this question, I'll wait for that question. But growing up as a fan, were you going to the matches? Your dad, is, go ahead and tell her about your dad, about your brother, and so forth and so on. Yeah, my dad started whenever he was like 18, 19 years old. And he's been wrestling all through the 80s, 90s, 2000s. So I was born into this, honestly. I, I Growing up as a kid... I never even cared. Like I didn't have nothing to do with wrestling. I didn't want nothing to do with wrestling. And my brother was the guy like Nick, my brother, he knew from the time he was born, he wanted to do it. My brother, he was the guy, the wrestling guy. And he started out 15 years old, starting wrestling as soon as he could. I never had a care in the world for the business. I mean, I grew up in it. I was all about it as a kid. I went to matches. I grew up at Channel 5 backstage on Saturdays and going to shows, running all over the place. And just by the time I was able to understand wrestling as a kid, I was burnt out on it. I can see that. I can see it. I I had no... Yeah, I really Tell everybody, no your dad's Ricky Hayes. I don't mean to interrupt you, but your dad's Ricky Hayes, who uh, in the Dysburg area was – what was the tag team? I'm so sorry. The Dazzlers. The Dazzlers. They were and on, so on effing Memphis, over. So. On Memphis Wrestling, he went by the Dazzler, Ricky Hayes. I seen him in a very 
very, uh, against the Moon Dogs one Saturday morning, and uh, I felt sorry for him. So yeah. I really did. They they used to whip people to death there. Uh, but then your brother, I've shared dressing room a couple times with your brother uh, as Coach BT, and been around him. Uh, but all you guys, I mean, your your dad was really over. So do you think that hurt you or helped you when you first got going? Uh, well, it definitely helped. It helped a lot. I mean, my dad has been a huge point in my career as far as a wrestler goes. My dad has empowered me to do things that I probably would have never done had it not been for him. Just him having that legacy, him creating that name for us in the business. You know, people can bash it all day long and say that, you know, there's an asterisk by my name and I got what I could through you know, because of my dad, but, you know, my dad will be the first one to tell you that we've earned everything we've done, that by the time I came into the wrestling business, he was out. Right, yeah, yeah, he, yeah. He came back into the wrestling business because he wanted to have something to do with it for a little while with me and my brother together as a family. And he didn't stay long, but, I mean, you know, those first – few years that were pinnacle for me to learn he really guided me a lot in teaching me a lot of things from the business aspect of it now my uh, brother was the one who really was the one that taught me in ring and how to wrestle but my dad taught me mostly the business aspect of how to deal with wrestling and promoters and companies and just that respect of it being a business and as as a fan growing up, you know, I had no idea. It, it took me about, uh, I guess, I was I was eighteen to been a fan since I was six, eight years, something like that. Before I started really realizing what the business part of it was. Carter, how'd you get? How'd you get trained? How'd you decide? Hey, I want to be a wrestler. How'd all that happen? We know, you know, I know that Chris is uh, part of the business as growing up, but that wasn't you. Where? How did you decide yeah. to be the be a wrestler and you know, where did, was you trained at? So I knew from the time I was at least eight, nine years old that I wanted to do this. Um, no doubt in my mind. My mom and dad always told me it would be a far-fetched thing for me to do. And I just look at them and be like, <laughs> okay, say that now until I'm doing it. Um, I'm actually trained by Action Jackson and Mike Anthony, one of my mentors. So a lot of my in-ring acumen and the way I do things may or may, well, I hope it resembles them at least. Um, but I just fell in love with the business. I was always a big fan of the heels. I loved them or the bad guys as we called them for a long time and big time fan of Triple H and the whole evolution stable. Uh, it was kind of the thing that got me um my my favorite match ever is the triple threat match for the world heavyweight championship at wrestlemania 20. um i can name two of the participants in that match but for uh not promoting a murderer's sake i'm not gonna say the third one so but, really uh, that's that's a hard subject to talk about i actually was running is. my website at the time and and it happened i didn't even know i was running a story about it and had no idea what was gonna the end result it was tough uh so you, you talk about being trained. I've seen some of those guys' first matches, uh, Mike Anthony and Action Jackson, uh, two really have really become really solid workers. And I can, you know, uh, you can see that they taught you how to do do the, the small little things you have to do kind of thing. So, so Eric's I'm, growing I'm gonna up. I'm going to break that down. I okay. want to break that down real quick. So Action trained me in ring, and he's trained me outside of the ring as well on like my professionalism, how to be. Um, Mike has mentored me as far as what not to do. Uh, and I'm not going to throw him under the bus, but I mean, let's just be real. For the first few years of my career, I hated this. I got so upset and frustrated just because it was all, it was all bullshit for a little bit. It was just like, you'd have to sit here and weed your way through things. You have to deal with certain people that you don't want to deal with and have to do things that I didn't truly want to do, but you know, I love wrestling. So I wanted to just wrestle 
all the time. Pay your dues. That's what they call it. Paying your paying, dues. Paying yeah. your dues. <laughs> and so I would get visibly frustrated and I would start popping off at the mouth. And I'll, I'll never forget the time Mike pulled me aside and goes, Nick, you are really going to start hating this if you take it so seriously like you do. You get so mad about everything. And once that finally sunk in, I just started having fun with it. Um, it, it's I love it. Every day I'm coming home and watching something on wrestling. Yeah, I mean it's a never ending. I mean I talk about this on the podcast. You know, I guess I guess when I first got the K Fabe sheets, I thought I knew everything. You know, I know everything about the business now. Uh, <laughs> but um, I, I I mean I still learn shit now. You know, I mean I, I the last couple of years I learned you know uh, setting together TV and how they put y'all put the TV together. Uh, learn things like n- things I never thought about is, you know, what you do in between the moves, not just the moves, but what you're doing in between point A and point B, exactly. uh, stuff like that. I've never thought about, uh, Eric, you, did you just grow up knowing what did your dad, you know, cue you in? Did you know it was a work while you was around it? Did you know they hung out afterwards and stuff like that? Yeah. I mean, that, that, that was my lifestyle. I mean, growing up around Memphis, I've had, you know, those people, those Memphis wrestlers and these Mid-South legends, I mean, in and out of my house. I used to eat supper with Larry Booker of the Moondogs, old Moondog spot. I mean, we used to go to his house and have supper and hang out with his kids. I mean, I was just, these were people that were in my life on a regular basis that I hung out with. I mean, I, I didn't really have a lot of the typical friends just the everyday kids it was these were the people in my life i mean i i tell this you guys i tell a story that uh the undertaker used to hang out at my at my house okay but he was he was mark calloway at the time or a master of pain so it's one of those things when you're around people like that it's like they have to be big, big stars to imp- I Nobody impresses me in re- wrestling in the sense that I'm nervous around them or I don't want it to. You know what? I, it's just right. and with you growing up, you have a little bit of different experience. I love the idea that, you know, everybody was uh, coming over at your house and stuff like that. You were getting, but, but you, Carter, at what point did you, did you say, Hey, this is a work or how, how did you find out, you know, that they, well, they hung out afterwards and went to each other's houses and stuff like that. Yeah, I kind of always knew that. I mean, I knew that wrestling was fake and it was all scripted. Uh, I didn't really know, like, how – I'll put it this way. Triple H and Shawn Michaels were DX before they feuded. Those dudes hung out. You know they did. Right, you can't right. you can't have a fantastic match like that without knowing somebody front and back. Um, I didn't really realize that it was all a work until in my later years. Um, like I believed wrestling was real for, so I don't want to say I always knew it was fake. I always believed it was real up until I was maybe this is gonna sound so bad like fourteen or fifteen years old. <laughs> Uh, and you believed in Santa Claus too, damn it. Tell him. Tell him uh, you oh, did. my God. Oh, God. Sure did. <laughs> um, but I believe I'd get so invested in these storylines. Let's see. I was born in 92, so 1507. Okay. So, like, I really thought that a guy like Randy Orton and John Cena were just at each other's throats. They hated each other. There's no way you could have made me believe that those dudes hung out until you see it. And you're just like, oh, crap. Like, these guys are good buddies. <laughs> Dang. I huh? was sitting like, guys, I was sitting like 10 feet or seven feet from the ring. The first time I ever went to wrestling, I knew there was, there was something going on and it wasn't on the up and up, but you know, never knowing how they put together matches or what they did. My dad had seen Tojo and, uh, and somebody on a, I know Dysburg used to have a ferry. I don't know if y'all remember that. I don't know if you're. I don't remember it. Yeah. And my dad went across the ferry with uh, Tojo and uh, Jerry, Jerry Jarrett, I think, when they were feuding. I don't know. But it just killed him because he saw a baby face in the hill together. He was done with professional wrestling. He didn't want to talk about it anymore. Uh, 
So, Carter, you're from this area, right? In the uh, northeast Arkansas. And nope. you grew up in the Memphis North. Where are you originally from? Little Rock, Arkansas. Okay. So, Little Rock area. did Was growing up, you talked about WCW. I already know the answer to this, but I'm going to talk to Eric about it anyway. But WCW, WWE, did you, did you know anything about Memphis wrestling, the territories? Did you trade tapes? Did you? I know the websites were a big deal probably when you were a kid, uh, kind of the uh, KFA websites. Not at all, to be honest. And uh, I want to kind of touch base on something. I'm about to really embarrass myself here, and I just don't <laughs> care. You talk about Tojo and Jerry Jarrett going over there a few. I'll never forget the first time that I saw people going over their match. I worked as on a production crew because I've got production experience with WWE doing the first ever fast lane in Memphis. I'm setting up one of the ring posts and getting the turnbuckles put on. And I look over my shoulder and John Cena and Miro Rusev are going over their match. I'm like, you gotta be shitting me. <laughs> this is how it's done. Weird. So I was just very drawn to that. I kept looking over my shoulder, and I see John look back at me a couple of times. And I almost just want to be like, I never knew this is how it was done. I just thought you went out there and you you read each other's body language. Maybe you kind of had an idea of what you were going to do. I always knew that in wrestling, you always know your finish. That's why, like, if you ever see me and Chris get backstage, you'll see me get frustrated. And I'm like, dude, just give me the finish. I don't care about all the other crap. We can talk about it in the ring. Give me the finish. Because it'll and be one of those. is crap going over every tiny little head turn. <gasps> <laughs> and he it hates it. It kills me. Like, well, I, did, I wrestled, but I was horrible. I wrestled maybe 18 matches. I just did the manager thing. But the guys, that the two tag teams that I had, I'd switch up, be one of them's manager in one town. And, uh, and we, we did the whole thing where, where we would call nothing. I would call a start. I would let them call the finish and nothing in between. Not, we wouldn't call the heat spot or nothing uh, just to see if we could do it kind of thing. We did that. You know, I did – we did over 100 dates in the first nine months. So I, I was putting them through two or three nights a week, which is a lot, you know, in this area. And we were doing tr Trenton. We was doing Dysburg. We was doing uh, all them little towns through there. Uh, but you grew up in the Memphis area, Was and Memphis wrestling was always a big deal. Uh, is that what you watched, or did you start – was you watching WWE and WCW, Chris, or – I still want to call you Eric. Um, was, it, was it just a little bit of everything with you in wrestling, or did you ever do the tape trading and all that kind of stuff? I – I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I never watched it as a kid. You know, I was always at the shows locally and doing the the local shows, but I never, I never was much of a student for the business. I mean, like I said, as an early kid, we're talking about early ages here. I was so involved in it personally that I was kind of burnt out on it and didn't really have the want to do it as Such a child. Disrespect. <laughs> Carter. Hey, I, yeah, I can just, get it. It's a real. total I knew it was. I knew y'all's experience is totally different. Uh and, and, and just I never had any want to do it before because it was just that was my life and and I just I wanted to do my own thing. My as a kid growing up, I always wanted to go do, you know, this was my dad and brother's thing. I always wanted to go do my own thing and find my own path. Little did I know that was going to bring me right back here to excel doing it just as much as they did. And, but, and Memphis being such a big deal during, well, during, when I was, uh, I was during the big years, you know, 78 growing up was huge. Uh, 1980, 81, 82, 83, right there when I was in high school was huge in Memphis. What did they say? 80%. So 80% of the televisions were watching, uh, was watching Memphis wrestling. And it brings me to, you were in Little Rock. You was watching WWE and WCW. You, yeah, you was around the business all the time. And your, your story is typical for some guys that were in the business. Now this is for websites, 
they didn't even know what the kayfabe sheets were reporting. Like they'd had no idea. Like if, if the kayfabe people like one tag team, I remember talking to Danny Davis of the nightmares and saying, the nightmares is one of my favorite tag teams. They were, they were so good. Y'all were ranked one of the top tag team. He's got what? Yeah. I mean, they had no idea that they were ranked in, you know, that people actually liked them and watched them. Uh, but it brings us to this deal when you knew you was going to do TV and start on Memphis wrestling. And we talked to Brett Michaels about this and Brett put over the whole, it was just such a big deal for him. Was it a big deal for you guys? Oh, uh, I'm going to have to take this one, Chris. So <laughs> when I first got to go to Memphis wrestling, I reached out to Dustin Starr about joining Memphis wrestling first and got left on red. Oh, and it was such a heart. It was such a heartbreaker. And so I went up there with action one day. And I just put my butt to work. I was like, hey, man, my name's Nick. Uh, whatever you may need, might need, I got you. And I just looked over at the ring. Do what I do what I know. Let's go pay some dues. Start putting the ring together. I was run. I was running for guys to, you know, pick up their jackets and whatnot. My first show and was really attentive to detail when they were at top of the line. So when the ring skirt would fall under and you could see like the rope of the uh, canvas being pulled in and like tied off at the post, nope, we're hanging that back up every after every match. And I got done, went up to Dustin and said, hey, man, I think, you know, thanks for the opportunity for letting me come out to help out. I appreciate it. He goes, no, nah, man, you're really attentive to detail. I appreciate it. And I was like, well, and then somebody, a fan comes up to me and goes, oh, he don't know who you are. And I was like, well, he's about to find out. And so I told him who I was wrestling wise, and he was like, oh, okay, well, consider yourself booked. And I came in, did a match. I didn't come back for two months. I thought it just wasn't good. Uh, came back and started doing the, uh, being a job guy, going over or going under to Brett Walker, K. Tumor. Had no He's making a it. whole list here who he lost. No. Chris, you can tell us, us the list for you, too. What was that? Oh, I, I was actually at that taping. I was there that day whenever uh, Carter, that day Carter's talking about. That same day, this was the Grind City Rumble, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. That tape. Oh, God. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> last, the first one. Year, uh, that same taping, the night before. I had a show in Donovan, Missouri, and it's about four hour drive from Memphis. Yep, I know. I've, and, I've used to have a. My dad had a camping ground or a camping house there when he yeah. when he was a hunting house. So. But I literally was completely broke, had no money, worked the show that night, got paid fifty bucks, put every bit of it in my gas tank, and went to Memphis without a dollar to my name on a limb because one of the guys told me to show up at that taping. Were you in that rumble, Chris? I was not in the rumble. I showed up. I talked to Dustin kind of, you know, me and Dustin kind of went back a little bit from whenever he used to wrestle in Newburn back when my dad ran a show years ago. But I was told by one of the guys to come down, introduce myself, hang out, kind of mingle around because I know just about almost everybody already before I even started wrestling in Memphis, just being in the business for 10 years, I knew the guys. So he told me, you know, come down, hang out, let your presence known, let them know you want to be there. And if there's a spot, they might put you in. So I went, I introduced myself. I didn't wrestle. I hung out, just kind of talked to the guys and then Went home, a couple months went by, and then I got a phone call that Dustin wants to use you. So, I mean, you're looking at television. It's the top CW, uh, one of the top CW channels in America. You're getting a lot of exposure on YouTube, Facebook, you name it. Have you guys noticed the fans coming up to you more now that they, they notice who you are and in the area, in this little tri-state area mm -hmm. even in my area they notice who i am yeah i get a lot of it here too i mean i'd go down to the local diner in the mornings for coffee and breakfast 
and all the old men will sit there and seen you got beat up last weekend. <laughs> and I'm like, yep. I yeah, started yeah. working at Best Buy for a little bit just to get a little extra money before the holidays. And my first day of orientation, one of the one of my fellow coworkers like popped so hard. She was like, Oh my God, oh my God, I know who you are. And I'm like, <laughs> You do? I'm sorry. Where do you know me from? She goes, Aren't you in a tag team on Memphis Wrestling? And I went, Huh. This is yeah, over. I mean, it's just it's surprising at the reach I had my podcast has did huge numbers because of television, you know, when it comes to the pike, the rolling to info, and then everybody listens to everything else. So that's a good thing. Uh, so we're going to bring you up to the tag team. Chris, did you tag with your brother before? Were y'all a tag team before? Yeah, I've, I've come into the wrestling business, probably 70% of my wrestling career in 10 years has been tag teams. I mean, me and my brother have been a tag team for the last, well, the first nine years up until me and Carter started tagging. You know, about the same time me and Carter started tagging, my brother took a job in Georgia in the Atlanta area. So he had to move and we stopped what tagging. Was, what was y'all's about name? About that time. What was you and your brother called? Team Redneck. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. What happened with me was that after I quit doing the site, I kind of lost, not lost interest in wrestling, but the local guys, you guys are the young guys that started that I really didn't get to watch uh, until Memphis wrestling started. But I knew you were in a tag team with your brother all the time. Did you, was you a singles guy, Carter, or did you ever tag with somebody else? Oh, I was a singles guy for most of my career. I tagged with, somebody that trained with action for a little bit whenever we were uh working with craig stone in jonesboro uh they little throw together thing that we had working but it's kind of crazy i've been a heel most of my career i have never really played the baby face role it's very very new to me uh for anybody that really knows like the real inner workings of me i am one of the biggest pricks you'll ever meet <laughs> like, just being not Oh, God. I'll never forget it. I scared the crap out of you when we did the Newport show. You remember that promo? You and Dustin were on the stairs when we did the Newport oh, show. Oh, yes, with... yes, yes. I, I knew. And then, uh, yeah. Challenge that's when Nikki Dustin Lane. Told, yeah. Dustin told me, uh, Dustin told me that night, he said, uh, I got to do something with Carter. He said, he's a good, and this is not a bad thing. Because uh, for some reason, it become a bad thing to some people he's a good hand he'll do anything i ask him to do we gotta do something with him and then i came up no i'm just kidding uh but you had a fun <laughs> you had a fun match that night uh putting over nikki lane and that the fans absolutely loved it and uh and i i had said that you what did i say that you identified as a woman now i had yeah, said that. That, yeah, we, yeah, we, yeah we definitely wasn't gonna let that one get over i was like no sir no, sir, we're not doing that. <laughs> All right, let's talk about it. So I know I know a little bit of what happened or what y'all thought at first, but you can we can talk about it. So Dustin is Dustin the one that came to you and said, I want to put you two guys together. One of you's gonna be country music, one of you's gonna be rock and roll, and I'm a, I'm gonna call y'all country rock, and then what'd y'all think? At so first, be honest. At, be honest. At, oh, at first. Uh so he come to me and he said, Man, I want to use you. I just don't know, you know, you work really good in the ring, but what's your character? And I was like, Well, I mean, I have a little bit of a background in rock music. I played in the band for a little bit and I've always kind of lived that rock star lifestyle, if you know what I'm saying. Uh things have changed recently. But I've always lived that high roller, rock and roller type of lifestyle. So I was kind of a pitch to him. I was like, I'm kind of a rock star dude and just kind of go to the beat of my own drum. And he said, I got an idea I want to see how you work with. And so he was texting me back and forth that week talking about, could I get some like platform boots and like pair of rock star jeans? And I sent him a picture of my gear and I was like, this is kind of what I'm wearing right now. And he goes, okay, perfect. And so me and Chris filmed the vignettes and he goes, what are we going to call this thing? Country rock? And I was like, eh, we'll think of something. And then I go to Terrence Ward and this is where this gets funny. I said, Terrence, what am I going to call this thing? He goes, country rock that's its name and he goes you're a little bit rock right you know he's a little bit country you're a little bit rock together you're country rock and i went that's the name it works 
it works and we've been rolling with it ever since i mean at the first time we heard about it i mean my honest opinion eh, eh, i'd rather not tag but hey you you throw something at me i'll do it i don't care i'm just happy to be here let's make the most of this opportunity and i had met chris at a dyersburg show what was this chris what three years before that maybe nah, 2018? about the same about that time three or four yeah years. three four years prior and I remembered him when he walked back in the door and I was like, Oh, okay, cool. I remember this guy and hit it off and it works. It it's, does. It does work. The first, the first little video y'all did, I put it over, but I laughed at it. Um, I'll tell you, <laughs> honestly, I laughed at it. Uh, but I was, I was told just let, just let them work. Is what someone told me. So well, let's watch their work. They're both work really hard. They'll and I'm gonna get them over, is what Dustin told me. Uh, and, and y'all guys are over the crowd, loves y'all guys. The country rock thing works. I love y'all's theme song. Uh, when too. y'all come out, it actually, as soon as it starts playing, you know who's gonna be coming out. Uh, Chris, did you think, hey, this is a good idea? I mean, you're dressing like you know, the country guy, the Come on, uh, your gimmick almost looks like you're a hunter that just got through done uh, hunting in the woods, and you come. But did you think maybe this is this is a little too cheesy, or is this going to work? Well, at first, I wanted to kind of do the wrestler thing. I wanted to wear the tights, and I wanted to be professional because I've always been told that. You know, being around here, doing the whole redneck thing that a lot of times that's not going to get you anywhere. So I was kind of against it at first, the idea of being the country boy deal, because I wanted to grow and expand and go somewhere with it. And whenever Dustin pitched it to me, he was like, he said, I want to use you, but your character, there's just nothing for that. So I went back to my roots and I kind of looked at everything and reassessed my personality and said, well, what do I know? I'm a country guy. You know, me and my brother, me and my brother were, were team redneck for nine years. That's, who I am, that's, I mean, that's my everyday life. I mean, I am the hunter. Like you said, I'm the guy that's hunting and fishing and out doing country boy stuff. And whenever I started embracing that personality into wrestling, things started flowing more naturally. I didn't feel like I had to fake who I was to be that guy. I could just be myself and I could just be me. And it, allowed me to open up the door to just be myself and to really go more than I ever thought I could because I can do it being honest to who I really am. And I think that, I mean, I have a lot of thanks to Dustin for that because had he not put that in my idea, I'd probably still be struggling to figure out my identity in wrestling, but just, just being true to myself and being who I really am allowed me to, be able to just open up my mind and start to really just unleash my potential. And I mean, it's I okay to be a you tag know, team we, wrestler too. We tap like, into a lot yeah. of the team red old team redneck homage with our with country rock with a lot of the move sets we do and a lot of the stuff we do. That you know, I've just shot ideas at Carter and said, "Hey, do you think this will work?" and He'll say, yeah, it, it works here, or how about we tweak this, or no, that just doesn't need to happen. And, you know, we've, we've made it our own. We've made it our own thing, and it works organically. We don't have to force nothing to happen, and it all just flows. I and agree. Really I, I was not the guy that said this is going to get over to the uh, to the extent it has got over. Uh, I was I I I love a tag team with a name and a gimmick. Midnight Express, Rock and Roll, The Moon Dogs, Pabs, Own and Heart Foundation. You name it. I hate two single wrestlers 
with no name and no gimmick. I just don't get it. I just don't like it that way. Uh, and then I, I, I wrote this down because I really wanted, why did y'all pick the 3D as the finisher? What made you do that? That was my call. It that was big. my call, to be honest. That really was my call. And I'll be extremely <laughs> – let's be real. I use a cutter for a finish. I wanted to continue using the cutter. Somehow, some way, I wanted to use a cutter. And I wasn't backing down from that. Nobody uses a cutter in Memphis Wrestling. I think for an indie wrestler, I give one of the cleanest cutters. And again, BT, you've I you've love now the 3D. Seen it. Yeah, I love You've the now 3D. seen it. And I wanted to use it. And so I was like, why don't we try the 3D out? And I'm pretty sure for everybody that's seen the first few times we did it, oh, my God, it's horrendous. But once we kept having to do it, we did tag team turmoil, and we had to keep using it. We had to keep doing it, doing it, doing it. And it was just like, okay, we're eventually going to get this down. And I'll never forget the time that it went. Perfect. Jay Smooth. Sorry, Jay. But (laughs) you took the best. 3D because I, I can't tell you how many compliments I've gotten from that. I've been told timing is everything with that maneuver and we hit it perfectly. I still send that up to uh, I, I sent that up to WWE to because uh, I'm trying to do some work for them. It is. It's one of those uh, I, I fucked up a 3D one night. They were giving me a 3D and broke somebody's ribs. So Ooh. sorry about that, Ruth. Uh, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, naughty by nature. Yeah, uh, and he told me, "Oh, you didn't hurt me. You didn't hurt me." Uh, so he was, you know. So with that, with the three D, with the country rock three D, we're a tag team now. Uh, is there tag teams now that y'all go study to try to steal? I say steal, but that that's the best word to put it. Steal from because I always studied tag teams like. When they, how they did the heat, you know, did they, did they start it? When did they start it? How long did they do the shine? Blah, blah, blah. D- is there guys that y'all actually are studying to do that? I study a lot of Edge and Christian. Uh, and it's just because Good of my team. frame. Yeah. I, I thought for, I, and I still think this for the longest time, people have compared me to Christian uh, because of my size, how tall I am, but how short I am at the same time. And my, I'm not overall a big dude. Uh, right. the Hardys, I'll, I'll never do some of the things the Hardys do because I'm not that crazy, but, and I, I just, I just like old, the things that I grew up watching, you know, I, it's I'm not going to say it's hard for me to go back and watch the rock and roll express. I just, oh, and I might get some heat for this. I just don't think that that works in today's wrestling. It's you only gotta, the psychology part that still works, and I understand right. what you're saying. I understand what. What about you, Chris? Is there anybody, any teams that you like to watch? Well, I, I used to be a huge uh, fan of the Young Bucks and how they work, and that, I yeah. used to do a lot of my wrestling style was like the the AJ Styles, the Young Bucks, but then I gained about. 40 pounds and now I can't move like I used to and I can't really do that flip flop and stuff anymore so I'm having to relearn how to work and it's how a, to adjust my totally style to my style. size yeah 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 it's it's a hybrid it's a if you ever watch triple a or watched any mexican wrestling it's a mexican japanese I want to fly around the ring kind of thing. And it, it doesn't work everywhere. And AEW, it works like crazy. People absolutely love it. Their fan base loves that. I like I like it, but I can't watch I can't watch five young book matches in a row. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I can't I can't see it all. So yeah. so well, let's see. You can't watch one young book in match this, period. Oh. In this area, the people respond really well to it. And then I know in the West Tennessee area and around this tri-state area, people respond really well because they get so much of that old school Memphis brawling, fighting, traditional wrestling that when you see something different, someone pops a, a flip or something or when I dive over the top rope, it gets a good reaction because it's something fresh that they're not seeing. So, that's where I've always wrestled, and I've always done that high flyer style mixed with a little bit of ground and pound because 
my favorite wrestler is Triple H. So I try to mix a little bit of big man Triple H stuff with the high flying. And that's kind of how I've developed my own little style of how I work. But being that I've gained 50 pounds almost in the last year, I'm having to relearn everything I know wrestling wise and learn how to be not a high flyer anymore. Right. All right. We're going to break down a tag team match just real quick. So, so most tag team matches start with the baby face shine. Baby face gets a good shine, do a bunch of fun moves. All of a sudden the heel cuts them off and you start getting heat. Now you can do a double heat, triple heat, whatever the hell you want to do. A lot of times it's just one heat. I saw you guys in black rock. We did one heat that, that night and Carter took all the heat took an ass whooping, got the hot tag, boom, boom, boom. At the boom, boom, boom part are the hot tag. Do you guys switch up? This is one of my favorite questions because I love the inner workings of how, how you decide. I used to point to my tag team members, the guys, you take the heat tonight, you get the hot tag, blah, blah, blah. Uh, do y'all uh, flip a coin or something? Or does uh, Carter take the heat like uh, – like Ricky no, used to do it has it has to go with the storyline. Whatever story we're telling, that's where it determines who does it. Well, if, I mean, if if sorry, we're just Chris. working a regular match for someone else's storyline that doesn't have really much to do with us, we're just the guys that are working them. Then we'll say, "Yeah, Carter, you took the last two or three. I'll take this one." But if it's on our storyline with something that we're doing for our story. Sometimes it makes sense for him to take it, but other times it might make more sense where we're going for me to take it. So it really, it depends if it's determined by our storyline, then it's whatever works best for the story. But if yeah, it's, except I'm the one taking the ass whooping right now. If it's just something, <laughs> hey any, up. If it's just any regular match, then we'll take turns on it. And except, that, that's how know, me and my brother Saturday. used to do it as well. Yeah, yeah. I always like to swap. I had I had some some big guys one time that I was uh that told me they didn't like to lose to the small guys. So for six months the small guys pinned the big guys every match. But that's the kind of shit I used to do. I, I really believe there's a place for everybody and especially with tag team wrestling, how you I've watched matches where the baby face gets the whole match. I'm talking the whole match. They cut the baby face off after like a minute left in the match and get a little heat and then go to the finish. And I mean, it can do, it can be like that. The match I worked was uh, one of the better matches on the show when it came to psychology and everything like that, because y'all took the thing was getting these, even in a little town like that was to get those two guys over as monsters. And that's what they looked like by the time they got, you know, by the time the match was over. Uh, and the crowd responded good to that. I believe in the high flying stuff. I do. I love it. But I also believe that people, they buy into that so simple psychology. And if you can do it, man, uh, and put it in the right places, uh, like y'all do uh, on standard tag teams on TV and also at the arena. I wondered about that the other night when I went because y'all do TV matches. And then I was like, are they going to, they're going to stick with the psychology, but y'all did. So really good match. Um, I, I don't know if there, is there anything else you guys want to talk about? Cause I'm running out of questions. We're running out of time. I call it. The I got to add something. All right. All right. Go for it. You know, we were talking about this whole country rock thing and, you know, you know, how do we feel about it? Well, I can easily say this is probably the most fun that I've had in wrestling. This is by far like, it's not because it's TV. It's because it works. And it, it's not, I don't have to try so hard to be a, a character. You know, I, I, I called myself the American attraction for so long, and I still do, but, you know, I ain't got a dang clue what that means. It's just a <laughs> name. It, truth be told, it was the name of a song. And I like the song. And I like the band. And so I actually use the opening line to their song as my catchphrase. It's unoriginal. Did uh, you? And, but, Hey, people don't. I stole I, one of my tag team's name was the Riot Squad, and I stole it off a Japanese wrestling video game. I'm serious. The whole look <laughs> of my tag team was from a, a Japanese wrestling video game. 
I know what I was wanting to talk about. I did not ask when we started talking about country rock and everything y'all do. How is it fun? Is it looks like you're having so much fun doing these little videos about uh, you know, uh, somebody owing money and the whole gimmick that y'all been doing, but y'all sell what well, y'all work for uh Tops Barbecue one week, you know, a little bit. Are y'all having fun doing that? Oh my god, it's so fun. I, I love, love it. Blast. And I I'm love just that. ready for dude to pay up so we can like move on from them. <laughs> Literally, I mean I our videos, those those little promos you see, the the second one we ever did was the Christmas episodes around Christmas and New Year. Oh God, we, don't tell me. Me and story, Carter, Chris. when we first started <laughs> tagging, there was there was that still trying to get to know each other, still kind of struggling to make it work. The night that we did those in the back of my truck, Three that was the night all of it clicked. All of it clicked and everything started flowing. And literally the next day on TV, we everyone said y'all were smooth. Everything just it's making sense. It's perfect. It's all coming together. So and I got to add. We to that. literally spent four hours that night four in the hours. back of my truck, <laughs> me steadily pouring motor oil on a fire to keep it going. And there's a reason for that. It's because I'm so dang picky when it comes to promos. I'm like, no, you got to say this or that. It's not going to work if you don't say this exactly. My fiance was out there with us. We went and got a hotel room in South Bend and he lit a fire in the back of his truck. And I thought he was going to set me on fire a few times, to be honest. I was like, get that shit off me, boy. But I was like, okay. And I kept walking up. We, we had a promo that it never aired. And it was the best promo I think we've ever cut. Because we finally got it and it was a minute and I was like, we got to keep this short and simple, but pair each other off. And every time we messed it up, we probably had 30 takes of that promo. And I was like, okay, we're going to get it this time. And the time we almost got it, here comes the plane. And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. Like and literally had, 100 feet over our head. Literally just, and I'm like, I'm over here cussing and just pissed off. My fiance is laughing. And so I'm like, all right, we got one more time. It's 1 o'clock in the morning, and I am tired get it and we do it one good time and that really is kind of where i'm going with this i'm i'm ready to be done with this i'm i'm ready to whoop big jack and bruce because i'm tired of getting my butt kicked by i'm tired of you owing the money so give them some daggum money chris all right and, it was, and literally after up. the after that the the lunch break promo was, oh, was literally idea. flawless one take mm -hmm. first time and we nailed it right off the bat. That sandwich, were, whenever Carter throws my sandwich, he literally throws it into a dumpster <laughs> and nails the trash point. can. Awesome, awesome. First shot. Awesome. All right, guys, we're going to wrap it up. I appreciate y'all coming on. A country rock, guys, Carter Matthews and Chris Hayes. Join us on Same Bad Time, Same Bad Channel on the best little wrestling podcast in the business be there and as everyone knows and carter chris y'all should know this for now i love my mom as we Thank all do you. or we should <laughs> thanks guys here. that was good we did